If that was the case, there'd be no one with jobs, because most of what the jobs are is providing solutions to problems. Dolphins normally kill sharks. <laughs> so, no, they're, they're, they don't. Not, that's yes, killer whales, is. isn't it? In the room, 52 Jokers Wild. So you, you've just in, you've just been taking a few sips of your of your water there, and it looks as though it's quite clear. So there's a good bit of clarity in that particular drink that you actually have at the moment. And I think I hope it's clear. <laughs> I hope exactly. so. I yeah, hope yeah. it's clear. I can see through it, but what could be in there? It's what you can't see is the problem. It's oh, can well. you taste something else? Is there no? And there's a taste. Actually, we've hard water in this locality and so like i used to live in another village 15 miles off to the north there and the water it's called greg namana which means valley of the monks you should really call it the valley of the drunks because there were 17 pubs and there used to be some sort of brewery there from the monks 2000 years ago or a thousand years ago but the water is crystal clear and coming from the from Mount Brandon down to the Valley of the Monks and they used to use this water to make their beer or, or whatever type of drink I, I don't know what that was called back in mead I think it was mead that's it a thousand years ago there's an actual abbey there which is is 800 years old to 900 years old and that's and it's still in full functioning order and, and it's a beautiful little village in, in the in the, south, the sunny southeast of Ireland and the water is crystal clear. 15 miles over here, you, your kettles are being et up alive, your dishwasher is being destroyed. You know, your water is, you, you have to filter your water. You can taste the difference of the hard water. So what looks the exact same, tastes different, has a different history, a different constitution, and, and basically, potentially a different brand and a different value and different quality. So looks can be deceiving. It's not all crystal clear. So back to you. <laughs> well, actually, it's, it's interesting because you mentioned the mountains and the stuff coming down. One of the definitions that we have here is, is that uh, the clarity means clear clearness and clean water running down the mountain has clarity, which is why they took the water from there and made all the booze that they were actually doing as well. <laughs> there also is another definition that uh, so does a lovely singing voice have clarity. You know, the sound has that kind of pureness to it, which makes it really crystal clear, which is probably why that certain sort of sounds can actually break a glass because of the sound quality of it to it. So that's, that's another one that's interesting. So... What we're actually doing is uh, is another part of this uh, this definition is that we're bringing clarity to a situation, and you can help people see what they what really happens by clearing up misunderstandings or giving explanations, which makes things clear. And actually, that's something. Oh, that's and really, I'm probably really important. the worst. Do you think I'm clear? in what I say at the best of times. Do I have clarity to, to, to my vision or to my instructions or to my, my, my solutions or answers to problems? I don't think I'm your man that's Mr. Crystal Clear. If anything, I am actually putting more, I think you mentioned the glass before and I'm putting rocks in there, I'm putting sand in there. They thought it was clear. And I'm, I'm reminded of a film called Clear and Present Danger. What's clear to me is the present danger, not the clarity of what they think they're talking about. They're unclear as to what the problems really are. Or, or no, this is a big ambiguous statement of what are we talking about? But if things were crystal clear, I don't think there'd be any questions. There'd be answers would be self-evident. It'll be all straightforward. If that was the case, there'd be no one with jobs because most of what the jobs are is providing solutions to problems to bring in clarity to something that's not straightforward and and that, my whole industry of what I do was is trying to make something crystal clear out of out of muddy waters so no it doesn't have to, we, we can pick any subject under that heading and go do we have clarity can you hear me clearly are you listening to what I'm saying is it clear or is it clear in present danger and are you receiving what I say in my mind, I may, I might be clear in my mind, I'm using words I understand, but 
you're hearing muddy waters. You're going, I don't know what, he might as well be singing. He might as well have that mead from the mountain. He's probably, he might as well be drunk. He'd make as much sense. You know, so it's, it's a language of uh, clarity. So, and clearness and, that's, and that type of thing. I think that's, that's what's quite amazing about uh, the fact that we're human beings and we have a language and we talk. And yet, you know, I, I remember uh, when I first went to Belfast, um, I asked for a carton of milk. And the more I went, can I please have a carton of milk? The more the guy gave me a can of lilt. And I was kind of going, I thought I was being as clear as I could be. And the more and more I put on an English accent, he couldn't understand me. But if I'd spoken with a Belfast accent and talked about a carton of milk or whatever it was, he would have picked it up and understood it straight away. And in the end, he, I, when I sort of said, it comes from cows, he says, well, why didn't you say that in the first place? You just weren't clear enough. <laughs> but that's it. We... We, we ah. do struggle in our interpretations of what people are actually saying to us, even if we think we're actually using the same language. And, and uh, in some of our other episodes, um, well, uh, no. I was getting mixed up to saying well, whether, like, what, what were your truth and, and what you were saying. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, that, that's, it's interesting in a sense of um, there's, you know, two people meet on a street and they both start talking, but they don't realize they're speaking a different language. But you know, one can be German and one can be English. One might understand some English, possibly the German. The English doesn't understand any German. There might be a couple of words you can nearly make out, but they're, they're, uh, sometimes we're separated by a common language, but if actually, if we're actually separated by a different language, that's a whole other, you know, sort of kettle of fish, as they say. I don't even know what a kettle of fish is. It's, it, it, but you're now saying, Account. Actually, I remember being like an accountant working in the in the big big telcos. But my my customers or stakeholders were 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 product and sales people and marketing people. And I was speaking a language of accountancy, and they couldn't understand a word I was saying. I was talking budget and and, and deferred income and and revenue models, and they were talking muffins. They were saying we've got to go have a couple of cappuccinos and a couple of chocolate muffins and discuss creating a new product and a new campaign and a new mark you know how do we reach our customers and make them buy this product and and i'm going debit credit and money in and money out and cost and budgets and they're going we don't want to listen to you we don't want we, we just want to make new products and we want to have customers and we want to communicate to them but they didn't speak they were spending my budgets they were bills to to the accountants until they turned those those campaigns and products that they built into paying revenue customers, profitable customers, because otherwise they're just enjoying their job doing stuff. It has to have a target, a reason for being. Their, their reason for being is not coffee mornings and spending budget. It's to create opportunities and value for the company they work for. And I got lost in that language, and I, I just I suddenly realized. I'd rather be sitting on the opposite side of the fence. I'd rather be just discussing double chocolate chip muffins, cappuccinos, and relationships with customers than continuously be seen to be in this person talking about cost, treasury, budget, variance. There's a, there's a nicety, nicety to some of the languages, but there's also a responsibility and accountability hidden in them too. What what's really great about what you've just I'm been talking about is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's really great about what you've been talking about there is that you you were getting into a muddle, a right mess, a bad situation. And the interesting thing is, is that a kettle of fish is an awkward, difficult, or bad situation, a muddle, a mess. He managed to get himself into a fine kettle of fish, a state affairs, a matter uh, under consideration. That, so, so in other words, although you said you didn't understand what a kettle of fish was, you then went on to explain it beautifully. And it gave us a lot of clarity about that whole process that really, when, we, when we're getting ourselves into a difficult or a different kettle of fish and we're getting into a muddle and we're getting into a, a really awkward situation, sometimes what we need to do is just calm down, sit back and start to look at what's really happening to get some kind of clarity. And part of that is to make sure that we have a good conversation so we understand that we're coming off the right hymn sheet is one of the wings they might talk about so that we know that we're, we're discussing things Actually, in the right yeah, way. there you go. Singing off the same, singing off the same hymn same sheet hymn, would so, then imply yeah. we've got clarity, we've found a common language and we're focused on, you know, being in tune, you know, together, you know, with the same 
language, same words, same pace, same tempo, we're aligned. You know, same and, key. And again, you can, it, that goes back into business language. You're going, we have purpose, we're singing the same song, we've got targets, we have a name, we have an audience that's there in the church. It's, there's a reason for it, and, and you know when it sounds out of key. You know what wrong sounds like. It, you immediately, if one singer goes out of tune, you can clearly hear the lack of clarity or the lack of, 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 of that broken rhythm or that broken beat. And you can point it out and go, get back into tune, fix that problem. And then we're back to the rhythm. Where Then we're back to the pace. Then we're back to the machine works. And, and that's what we want in, in all our relationships and all our jobs and all, is, is we want a, a rhythm. We want to get that so everybody's singing off the same hymn sheet. We're not working across purposes in the business. We, we know what the song is. We know who the audience is. We know when the time to sing is. It's this church, that time, that day, to that audience. We're not singing a Protestant song to a Catholic audience. It's, you know, we're not getting caught up in religion. We're not singing an English song to a German audience unless they asked for it. It's, it, it, it has to be the right matching of language. It's, you mentioned this kettle of fish. I'm going, is it sardines? Is it tuna? Is it dolphin friendly tuna? Why are we talking about fishes in that. the kettle when we shouldn't <laughs> have a kettle and we shouldn't have any fish? It's like, yo, kettle, what the hell is a kettle these? days. I press a button on the, on the Nespresso machine and my cappuccino pops out the other end. I wouldn't even know what a kettle is anymore. So it's we want to get, why have we got a kettle? Why is there fish? We've got their problems. They're, you're nearly saying we have a kettle of problems. We've, a, we've, we've got a bucket of problems that shouldn't exist. We've got to get rid of the fish. We've got to put them back in the ocean. We've got to make sure they don't get back in this basket. We own the basket. We want no fish in it. We want clear water. We want clarity. You know. And that's when you have to start fishing around to try and work out what it is that you're actually saying. Oh, it's funny because the waveform looks like a fish. <laughs> that's really bizarre, you know, technical stuff. But no, that's that's the thing. It's It's, you know, and I think what we've started to find through the processes that we're going through, we're starting to find an alignment in what we're doing. So we're, we're working at the, on the, at the same pace, at the same way. We're, we're, when, when one of us is going slightly out of sync, we can pull the other one back in. So we get a right momentum going. And there's an equilibrium, which is actually really, really good so that we know exactly what it is that we're trying to achieve that day or that week or that year uh, as we move forward. And one of the things I think that is becoming quite clear no, to us I, is that we haven't gone off target at all in any form or fashion. So, you know, which I think is really good. You were going to say something there. No, I like, I like the f we, this fisherman analogy. Yeah, or, well, the fish has pushed me to fisherman. Fisher person, fisher woman, fisher whatever. But f I'm going to use fisherman because just, it just rolls off my tongue easier. And, you know, you, when you think of the fisherman, now don't start going into, you know, the 40 lows and, you know, so many fishes, I don't know. But I'm thinking more of, you know, I had a friend when I was a, back in my good old days of being a young lad, and he, he liked to go fishing. And this is when we're teenagers. It wasn't a normal thing for a teenager to do back in the 1980s. But he liked to go fishing. You know, but where he was going to fish, I, go, I don't believe there's any fish in that river. And he, he, so he wasn't going fishing for fish. He was going fishing for mindfulness, for solitude, for, you know, so when you start going, he'd be just there, he'd be six hours casting out that, that uh, worm on the, end of the, on, on the end of the hook, and I go, that worm was just going for a swim. He'd come back, there was no fish there, but he would put the day in, he'd have a great day, he'd enjoy himself, and the worm would nearly go back in, in, in the little jar. He just had a little backstroke. Now, he used to be, he's all, he was a fisherman, he'd go sea fishing other times, but he's out there, and he's, he's fishing for those bigger fish. He's on the back, he's going out there, it's 12, it's hard work. It's a day's work, but you're going out to catch something you know exists and you've got a bigger rod and you've got the right bait on the end of it and you know what you're fishing for. He's not going to the pond at the end of the road, he's not going to the river at the end of the road. I believe there's trout and salmon here, but out there there might be killer tuna or, or God only knows what. But there was purpose and it was maybe the other one was practice and meditation, and the other was I have purpose. So we're all fishermen or fisherwomen. You know, there's a personal side and a business side. Which pond are we in? What 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 have we got on the end of the hook? What's in the pond? You know, you can't expect to be fishing in a pond and pick up a tuna. It's not going to happen. You know, it, you know, I don't know what statistics might lead it to happening, but it's not going to happen. 
realistically. So we're going out there with our fishing rods and we're trying to target, you know, our tuna. And, and we're, we're, we're possibly in the wrong pond, at the wrong river, in the wrong language, with the wrong bait and with the wrong rod. And that's what we're finding. We need to get the right tools for the job. We need to know what fish are in the pond, which pond they're in or river. And we need to put in the effort and work to get that catch at the end of the day. Because the work and effort is there. There's no point spending 12 hours fishing in the river with a, with, a, with a worm that's going swimming and there's nothing actually in there that we can catch. So th that's what we're doing on YouTube an awful lot of the time. We're throwing a couple of worms out into a pond and there's no fish out there and we're in the wrong pond. So let's be mindful of where we are, who we're targeting. Are you looking for tuna? I think we're looking for tuna now. We want to be, we want bigger fish in smaller ponds. Yeah, actually, it's funny because you then started, you were talking about fishermen and I hadn't even been thinking about what you actually described in the first place. What I actually was thinking about was as a kid, I went off with my dad fishing quite a few times. And what, what one of the things I found very interesting about Ireland and, and England is that um, people of my class, which is the lower class, working class people, um, we were coarse fishermen. Uh, the, the, the toffs and all those people, they were the ones that went fly fishing and doing all that kind of stuff. But when I came to Ireland, I suddenly discovered that everybody loved to go fly fishing. I'm kind of going, I hate it. And the reason why I hate it was you're, you're flicking the fly. Oh, you're doing so much work. And half the time you're trying to cut your fly out of the tree to make sure that... Um, you can actually get it back again. In fact, most of the time I was in the tree trying to get the stuff out. So I actually wasn't fishing. Whereas the coarse fishing was actually really good because you'd you put the little float in and you put it in and you throw a little bit of, you, you, we use maggots most of the time and you throw a little bit of maggots and bait around and the fish would all come along and they'd catch your thing and you'd pull it out. But it was, it was nice, it was quiet, it was serene. You'd see the mist in the morning coming off the water. You'd see the mayflies and the dragonflies darting all over the place. One of the uh, biggest issues about fishing was that quite often you had the ants walking all over you and biting you. <laughs> so that was a that was a major problem. But hey ho, the scenery was actually now, lovely. Now I'm going to stop the you. And go, that we you're were having. too. Yeah, I've got. Yeah, that's it. It's only use the language. This is a mindfulness show. My God, he's gone off. He's been mindful. He's reminiscing about fly fishing in the yester years of and the ants walking over us like his, his his little sort of triangle cucumber sandwiches and back in the. You have in, to get the, the right uh, picture though. Ah, yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. But no, no, you were no, talking no, about all that went into my head. All, all that was in my head was an episode of The Simpsons where Homer Simpson went fishing with dynamite, and I said. That's me. If I'm going fishing, it's with dynamite. I'm throwing it in. There's a big bang. There's 95 fish. There's a bucket. Well, actually, there's a kettle. I'm putting the fish in the kettle and I'm off home. I'm not seeking out that mindfulness. I'm trying to get the fish in the most efficient manner, quickest route ah, to market, we see, sell I them think, at the local stall afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so therefore, ah, but you see, that's, that's where, that's where I, think, I think that's the where fishing mindfulness. Nah. But one of the problems is that when sometimes you go off and you do things and you, you set out with a purpose, we talked about this before, that sometimes we have to stop trying. And quite often it's at those moments we catch the bigger fish. And that's one of the things that we tended to find. Whereas when you're going out at hammer and tongs, as, as me and you are finding out when we're on LinkedIn quite often, as soon as we connect to someone, they're trying to sell us straight away. They're out. They're sharks trying to get us. In fact, one of the little images that I used on one of the, the last... Uh, little mini podcast was a shark, you know, and having to face the sharks. But they're, they're you know, you kind of go, I can't build relationships with them. But you see, when you calm down and you're not trying to push things, those little moments, you suddenly see someone just down the boat and say, hi, how's it going? What are you up to? And you have a little natter and you suddenly find that you've just developed a really good business client because you can offer them something and that, and they're chilled and they're happy to talk because they don't feel as though you're trying to sell them stuff. And you'd mentioned in the last few days, there's a couple of things that you'd actually done. You weren't fishing for anything. You were just chilling. And all of a sudden, these ideas and things came to you and people came to you because they, they weren't feeling under pressured and opportunities that could be quite amazing suddenly turned up. And I think that's 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 the key. If, if we're constantly no, trying the, 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 and trying the, the, and the, the, trying. There's an Yeah. It's not that you weren't fishing. You were out in the boat with your rod. You weren't concerned it was like the chap in the first story is going there may not be any fish in the pond but i'm here i'm out here i have my rod it's it's got a bait on it 
I'm, I'm, I'm available, I'm thinking, I'm looking. I'm, now, what normally happens in those films you normally see, it's you hear the do, 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 do music and it's Jaws. It's what's under those waters. You don't know if it's a penguin or Jaws 2. It's because you're, it's not above the water. No, unless you have radar and you've got that nice little yacht going on and you're tracking and tracing, that's a different story. But if you're out there in the calm sea with your rod, it could be a shark or it could be a penguin. I don't know whether penguins are out there, but I mean, like a small fish, you know. So the real thing here is there's fish out there. You know they're out there. You're not looking, you're not, oh, we're, not uh, we're not casting nets. We're not there in a trawler trying to, you know, drench the, or drain the oceans dry. We're going, because that's not the, that's the high volume, low value space of, we're not in that space. We're looking for the whale. We're looking for the, the killer, sh- the, 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 the black, that black and wild, is it the killer whales or whatever you want to call them, or the, yeah. the big whale, or, or, or the masters of the ocean. Actually, I'm looking for the sharks because they're there a thousand years. They're the experts. They're the machine. They, 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 we're not trying to catch them. And we're not, actually, I think we're, we're trying to be one of them. Not in the sense of the bad connotation of the shark, the killer, because I think they're, mis- they're misinterpreted an awful lot of time. No. They're the ancients. They're the masters. They 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 own the ocean. They, they in the sense of they're the machine. They're the machine we want to be. We want to be present. We want to be not feared but respected. We want to have a certain value perception and understanding by those around us that you know this this is to be respected. They know what they're doing. They're here a while. They have purpose and you know and that and that there's a certain. Everyone knows what a shark is. You know, uh, you know they don't go, there's no, the, tell me what a trout is. Yeah, I eat that. I eat trout. But if there's a shark in the waters, we respect that. <laughs> and we're not, and I said, we're not looking to eat people out there. We're going, we want to be a friendly shark. We want to be a dolphin friendly <coughs> shark. You know, that, that's, I think, where we're going. But we're, we're going out there and you'll know we're in those waters. And we want, there's going to be a mutual respect and courtesies given and and let's see what we can learn from each other and 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 what value is associated with that and so so yeah i want to be a shark in a actually i want to be a shark in a pond that's a bigger a big fish in a small pond as opposed to a small fish in a big pond it's interesting because um, you, you've just reminded me of the whale that um, suddenly appeared in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy that was falling to Earth and was kind of asking all these questions about what was going on and, oh, this is interesting, this is a new experience. I only existed a few moments ago. Oh, what's this big thing coming up towards me? Oh, it looks pretty. Oh, blah. <laughs> Meanwhile, the potted plants... It's the ground. Went, oh, dear, it happened again. <laughs> and, and I watched that now, the other day because now, there's a wind, talking about There is an interesting <laughs> statement. You've just finished on It's Happened Again. And if you read that whole series of books, it turns out Arthur Dent was responsible. I'm trying to give you a little bit of it. Don't close your ears. Arthur Dent <laughs> was responsible for killing this same soul or individual multiple times in multiple universes across multiple timelines. Every time this person was reborn or this soul was reborn, whether it be a whether it be a, a whale in space falling to the ground or an ant that a sh- Arthur Dent's shoe just stood on or something else to that effect it was. No one would have understood that reincarnation existed except for this particular entity soul kept on getting killed by the same individual no matter where he was born or when he was born in the universe and then became self-aware of his previous lives and reincarnations. Now, many businesses so, have different So, in other words, he got clarity. <laughs> he, he got clarity. Got, became he crystal understood clear what was going on. <laughs> that had, Arthur Dent meaning. was his mass murderer no matter where or when he would be. And, and uh, so, but we have to, actually, we're trying to get, actually, there's a, I have a saying here, October 1st, the more sand that has escaped from the hourglass of life, the clearer we should see through it. I see clearly now. I think that's a, that's a lyric from a song, I don't know. I, uh, and that I think you see more clearly now. I see the past was muddied waters and it was full, it was lots of kettles with lots of fish. There's no kettles anymore. Fish, we're a shark. We want to be in a small pond. We want to be respected. We want to be valued. I have clarity. We have clarity, more clarity now. We're clear what it is we want to do and who we want to do it with. And it's not everybody and anybody. It's those that get it. 
to those that have the vision, to those that value what it is you're offering. It's, and not, that will not be for everybody. There are plenty of people out there that want to blow up pink eans in a pond, but they will respect the shark in their own waters. And that's where we're going. And they can swim with us. We're a dolphin friendly shark. They're the dolphins. We want to meet those dolphins. We'll be your shark. Ah, but there's there's the point. I was, I was actually just about to say that um, it's all about listening. But then you suddenly started talking about the, the it's a it's a, a, a shark friendly golfin dolphin. No, dolphins normally kill sharks. <laughs> so no, they're, they're, they don't. Not, that's yes, killer whales, is. isn't it? No, no. Uh, apparently, the the the, the bottleneck uh, 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 dolphin, the what do they call them? They All tend right, to no, kill I, sharks. I think we're on the right terminology. That's the whole point. Yeah. If we're a dolphin-friendly shark, we're friends. We're friends. Yeah. Now I you're think in that's, boat waters. Yeah, I think that's the key thing because what we what, one of the things that uh, again to get clarity is 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 if we rush in with our, all our own agendas and don't actually listen to what the other people are actually talking about, we can get so confused and muddy the waters and and feel like we're in a kettle of fish. Who, who can't actually get our voice heard. But if we actually respect other people and actually listen to what they're saying, we can then understand where they're coming from and what they want to try and do. And then we can see whether that fits into our own uh, objectives and see how we can collaborate. Because I think that's something we've also talked about actually, today. And there, now, there's collaboration. The now, the dolphin-friendly shark here is the supplier and the customer. And yeah. if, we, if we're seeing as a supplier and, we're, and customers are seeing that they're going to be paying us the money and they don't want, to, everyone, it's everything is separate. My supplier is cost to me, you know, and we're saying, well, our customers are revenue, depending on which, so, so, but we want to, well, we're a cost to them and they're a revenue to us. But which, and if, when it swaps around the ops way, no one wants to pay the cost. Everyone wants to be getting the revenue. So, the dol so this dolphin friendly shark relationship is the supplier and customer relationship, whereby if we're a shark and a dolphin, you're a customer, you're a supplier. You know, I'm sure that the, the, the shark is seen as the supplier, the cost. The dolphin is the revenue, the friendliness and the money. You're going, but we're going, if you have a dolphin friendly shark, you have this synergy of relationship whereby you want to be the customer. You want to be the supplier. You have that synergy whereby it works. You're now going where you can't go before. You have that extra protection. You've got that extra relationship on both sides of the fence that everybody gets the value and sees what it is as a result of this relationship and this synergy and this hybrid. One of the things that's quite interesting, because you're talking about that uh, that collaboration, and, and uh, a couple of pictures that popped up in my mind at that point was that there are certain birds that basically go around and pick up parasites off of crocodiles, and the crocodiles need them, otherwise they'll become ill. But also, likewise, with a the shark, there's a little fish that sticks on it, sticks itself to the outside of the shark, and basically it's grooming the shark. It's a bit like the hairdresser. So sharks have to go to a, a, an equivalent hairdresser just to get rid of all the parasites. So there is a that collaboration needs to happen, otherwise the shark itself can't survive, and it basically go mad with the parasites that are actually eating away at it. So we all need to collaborate with somebody else, even though we may seem to be the most dangerous mm -hmm. fish in the waters. They need help as well, and they need someone to sort their problems out. They sometimes just need someone to listen to them as well, because everybody else is being nasty just because they eat everybody else. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what business is. We're going, employ, no, it might be just software as a service and there's less employees in the mix, but ultimately you've got three or four moving parts. You've suppliers, you have customers, you have employees, and maybe you've got investor shareholders as well. So there's these four or five different people sets that for, for, for the whole thing to exist and to keep on existing and making, if it needs to make profits or it just needs to make money or whatever it's doing, its purpose is to create jobs, deliver value, you know, that's, that's in demand or required or asked for to do something else by someone else. So all these parts have to be working in harmony and have a similar type of value relationship in all directions. Otherwise, the investors will be jumping ship and not giving to work on capital. Otherwise, the customers will be, be going to the next uh, competitive offering out there and not being loyal customers. And, and workers will be moving jobs every five minutes. And, 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 and like in terms of the employees going, I get the best job. I don't need to work here for 20 years. So it's all about... This balancing act of the of the ocean. That's the whole point. It's if the if anything gets affected, if one starts falling out of balance, then 
the employees aren't happy, it'll seep through to the suppliers, it'll seep through to relationships, things are not getting paid as fast, customers will have a ripple effect and go, well, my experience wasn't as good as it was last time, and they'll start thinking about shopping elsewhere, and this, this, this movement capability will build in. So we want, everyone wants everyone to be happy and keep on paying and having a recurring income, and the job is always there, and the machine keeps on working, the oceans are full of life and good experience. The, the corals aren't Aren't disappearing away and that experience is disappearing and the fish is moving and the next set of and, and then the fishermen can't feed their families so it's it's a balancing act we are entering into the oceans of the business world we want to be you know providing value to all of these relationships and we want it to be a great experience for everyone concerned as does everybody you cannot be cutting costs you cannot be you abusing your employees It'll feed through, it'll seep somewhere, and those ripples of relationships will ultimately, in time, fall apart. So we want, we want to go back in time to those lovely oceans of coral filled and loads of different fish flying around, and everybody's happy, and everything is in abundance, and that's the journey we're going on. It's, it's, it's abundant relationships, good relationships, value delivery in all directions. You know, the sharks can live with the dolphins if there's plenty of food and everyone takes care of everyone else. That's what we built. We want a bit of that. Otherwise, we it's all it, go down together. It, it's interesting that uh, basically what we're, we're, we've been talking about the mountains where the water comes down and it, 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 it purifies the water and gives it clarity. We've also been talking about the oceans and how uh, when they're clear, people can see a long way or the fish can see a long way. We've been talking about lots of little fishy stories and about collaboration and various other things like that. And what, what, what it reminded me of was uh, we, we've been talking effectively without actually referring to it, ecology and how we need to create the ecosystem that we live within, which happens to be our planet and make sure it works well. And the more that we're in tune with what's going on, the better the results are. When we've had the kind of pandemic and the lockdowns, one of the one, one of the things that happened within about 10 to 15 days of the lockdown was that some people in a Chinese city could suddenly see the sky for the first time. There were actually um, jellyfish swimming through Venice because the waters suddenly became so clear because there's no boats going through and sort of stirring up the moat. Uh, the mud underneath and making it all muddy and 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 turning it into a right kettle of fish it was actually clear for people to see what was going on so in one sense when we did talk about um going fishing and actually simmering down do we want it to be work or do we want to just sit down and do mindfulness it allowed us to suddenly see things a lot more clearer and to get clarity in what we're actually doing so that we could find a way to actually move forward. And I think that that's something that we, we, we've, we've been exploring quite a bit during today's episode was how to make sure that we have clarity, clarity of language, clarity of vision, and clarity of mind in many ways so that we can collaborate with other people. And through that collaboration, we suddenly realize that we've, we're, we're part of a bigger community of people and that we can work and work together and build things together so we can all have a better life, which I think is the, is the purpose of what we should be trying to do anyway. So it's been a, it's been a, a wonderful little talk, story about that. But how, how do you feel? Did you realize that, that we were talking in those kind of ecological kind of ways through the conversation that we were having? It was, or is that a surprise to you? Well, that's the thing. It's no, no, I, I think it jumped in and jumped out. And I was like, oh, you're being a bit mindful there, being a bit clear. Oh, we're using analogies about business and or personal life. Actually, you just touched on it again, saying, you know, what came out of the, the, pan, the pandemic or the bits of the pandemic was peop, people by being pushed back into the homes and what work was needed to be done versus could didn't have to be done, was just being done for the sake of it. Then you're saying, and actually, there was, there was something on the news there earlier today saying that, it's talking about people, will they take the, 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 the cure if it's there, or the, the first test of it? And a third of people in Ireland said, uh, we, won't be, we won't take it on you know, the first available um, you know, cure test because you know, we don't trust it or we're not too sure. Another bunch said, well, actually, we don't want to go back to the way things were. So, so they were asking, you know, as a result of what happened with the pandemic in the last seven months, where are they now in their lives and, and what are they thinking about? And they're going, some are overly worrying. So mental health has been a third of them were saying, you know, they've had mental health issues or concerns because of worry, anxiety, fretting, whatever about the future. Others are saying, even though we're doing all that, 
we are not accepting the, the, the for to be guinea pigs to the first set of uh, drugs that come out. And another half said, well, actually, thank God it happened because we didn't realise we were running this rat race of just putting in time till the day of our debt. And, and now we can see more clearly what was going on and we don't want to go back to it. So this, we're, going, we're readdressing our entire lives of we were in the wrong pond, we're moving ponds. And we, we weren't hanging out with the right fish. We were hanging out with the sharks, we want to hang out with the dolphins. And we don't need to be doing as much as we were doing before. That was a, a chase and a race to, to, to basically collect goods till the day we die. When actually what's more important is the relationships we rekindled while being in lockdown with our family and friends and neighbours. And now we're saying that's the fish we're fishing for. We don't need to go to sea. We don't need a big boat and dynamite in my case. We need to go a little bit of fly fishing more locally and enough is enough and we can see more clearly now and we know what's important or more important and that's what we're working towards in our new vision. And I think uh, what, what what's coming out of, of, of everything at the moment is that it, it we, when you do have a chance to sit back and cool down because we can't rush ahead like we once did, we suddenly start to realise, ah, oh, actually, life isn't as bad as we thought it was. There's, there's a lot of really good stuff going on. And this is an opportunity to, to reset things. And I think after any major kind of uh, situation in the, in the world, what starts to happen is that people realise that life can be better and it gets better. It does get reshaped. Now, there may seem to be a lot of bother and riots and all kinds of crazy stuff going on at the moment, but things will settle down. The dust will settle. You know, the kettle of fish will realise that they're not doing what they should be doing and everybody will jump out and there'll only be one fish left in there. And the waters will get clear again for them to see, ah, oh, that's the way ahead. So there is a lot of positive stuff that we should be looking forward to. And this gives us the chance to, to, to work things through and to gain some kind of clarity of what we're hoping to do. So I think we've come to the end of another well, I show. I actually think of one more thing there. Yeah. Oh, go on, well, add that no, in. That kettle of fish. I, I'm, I'm just grabbing that kettle of fish and going, you know, Get some batter, get some oil, and get some chips. It's looking like fish and chips Friday here, and I'm going, that, that, that kettle of fish is dinner. And it's going, I'm looking forward to it. So goodbye. Unless, unless it manages to jump out and escape, and then it's a better life for it and not for us. And bite you. <laughs> bite you. Thanks for, thanks for watching, All thanks for best. listening, Take and care. look forward to seeing you next time around. Bye. Bye. Do what it says on the tin. Follow and share.